Hello and welcome to this section of the TI-89 Calculator Tutor. And here we're going to learn how to find the maximum and minimum, the max min, of a uh, function. So what I mean by that is let's go ahead and type in some functions and I've already got a few here. This is the uh, cubic that we were working with in the previous section. And this is a parabola shifted down. So when we go to the uh, graph screen, uh, this is left over from, from the uh, last section, but we can hit F4 to regraph it just to be absolutely sure that we're looking at, at uh, everything that I typed in here. And we'll see that this cubic will come up and then down and then up, and then the quadratic will come down sweeping below because it shifted down eight units. And really what we're going to be interested in doing is finding out, this is what we call a local maximum, and this is what we call a local minimum of this function. Uh, what this means is it's, it's, it's the maximum point that this function sort of reaches the top of the mountain here, so to speak. And here down here is you know the bottom of the valley, so to speak. We call it um, relative maximum and relative minimum because it's, it's relative to the whole function. I mean, this is the maximum value localized here. Of course, the function goes on up to infinity, so really the real maximum is way up here at infinity. Um, and likewise, the function goes down to negative infinity, so the, the, real, the real minimum of this function really goes down to negative infinity. Um, so this is what we call a relative minimum, because it sort of gets to that lowest point, relatively speaking, before it comes back up again, the highest point you know, localized here. So what we want to do is find these, these uh, actual areas and find the xy coordinates of where these guys maximum and a minimum. If you know calculus, you know how to do that. Uh, if you know algebra, you know it's more of a um, uh, uh, trial and error technique, but with a calculator it's really easy. All we have to do is go into the math menu and select minimum or maximum. So it just depends on what you're trying to find. Let's go ahead and try to find the minimum. The only local minimum that we have is right here, so we're going to go and search for this one. It's going to ask us for a lower bound than an upper bound, so same sort of thing. You select the lower bound to the left of uh, where, where that guy is, and then we go on the other side of it to some place. doesn't really matter where we put our cursor, just somewhere on the other side to hit the upper bound. It'll think for a second, and then it'll come back and it'll tell me here's a minimum. All right. Uh, at x is equal to 0.92624 and y is equal to this. This is the xy coordinate of the exact point that that graph reaches the most minimum value right here in the window that we gave it. All right, now what if you had two graphs drawn and you wanted to not find the local minimum of this guy, but you wanted to find the local minimum of the other graph? Uh, so you just go in here and hit minimum, number three. Uh, notice that your cursor is automatically on graph number one, but you can snap it to graph number two by going down. Uh, same sort of thing. So let's go to the lower bound on the other side here. We'll just hit it there and we'll go on the upper bound anywhere we want on the other side right there, let's say. It'll think for a minute. Uh, what it's doing is searching that window and it finds the exact maximum uh, at x is equal to negative 1.72, 10 to the minus 14, uh, y is equal to negative 8. Now when you get a number in this calculator that's so small, negative uh, 1.72, don't worry about that, the fact that it's 10 to the minus 14, that's an incredibly small number, which basically means x is equal to 0. All right. You got to remember it's a calculator. It calculates things in bits and bytes, so it only has a finite accuracy. It's not going to always give you an exact zero for this because it's doing numerical calculations that, that are sort of approximate in nature. So this is for all practical purposes zero, zero comma negative eight, and that's what it looks like. X is equal to zero, negative eight shifted eight units down. That makes sense because the graph was x squared minus eight. We shifted it eight units down, so it it should have a minimum. Uh, at that location. So, so far we've used the minimum command. Now let's go and do the maximum command. And it works exactly the same way, but in this graph the only maximum that we have is the one over here. And this guy right here, this other graph, it has no local maximum uh, because we only get to a minimum and then we go back up again. So it really doesn't even apply to that other graph, but we can find this guy here. We go to a lower bound, hit enter. We go to an upper bound and hit enter. It thinks for a second, searching through the window, and outspits an answer, negative 1.25 for x, comma, 8.406 for y. So it finds the exact value. Now let me show you something interesting. What you have to be careful about when you do this is that, you know, we know by looking at this, this is a local maximum. And we know that this is a local minimum, and we know that this is a local minimum because we're 
intelligent people and we look at the graph and we know the difference between what a maximum looks like and what a minimum looks like. But if you make a mistake, let's say you're trying to find the minimum of a function. To accidentally select minimum, let me do that again. You accidentally select number three and you go over here and try to put your boundary around this maximum. So you do this guy here and let's say you go over here anywhere on the other side of this guy and you anchor it here. Now remember we selected minimum which is not what this is. We put one anchor point here and we put one anchor point right around here. Let's hit enter and see what the, the uh, calculator does. It thinks for a second, it gives us an answer, uh, but the answer you'll see doesn't make any sense. It puts the cursor right here and it gives us some coordinates. So if you don't know what you're doing, you might just write these down without checking it or thinking about it and, and you're going to get the wrong answer. Well what we did is we we told it to search for a minimum. So we put a cursor here for the lower bound, we put an upper bound here, and what this calculator does is it starts at the lower boundary point that we give it, and it basically increments everything and it calculates values of y until it finds the smallest value. So because we started here, uh, which is, you know, up here x, x is equal to 5 or 6 or something like that, it goes up, it gets to a high point, and then it goes down here. Well, this is the, the upper boundary of my window. So when the calculator figures out what y is at this location, this is the smallest value in the window that we gave it. In other words, it did find the minimum for us. Uh, it's just that this doesn't make sense for what we're trying to really do because when you look at what's going on here, when you look at the window here, the value that it gave us was the smallest value of y for the window we gave it. Um, so it gives you an answer all right, it doesn't give you an error, um, but the answer isn't really what we're trying to find. So if you accidentally screw it up and select the wrong function, you're just going to get the wrong answer. We can do it the other way too. Let's accidentally select maximum, but let's go put our, our crosshairs around this minimum here. So we anchor it here and we go way on the other side, let's say way up here like this. What do you think is going to happen? We hit enter, it calculates, thinks it's searching here and it's going to find the maximum value and it ends up finding this one, which is the maximum value of y inside the window we gave it, which was from here to here. So it did find the maximum value in the window, it just doesn't actually make any sense for what we're trying to do because we're really trying to find the local minimum. So be careful when you select these two functions, figure out what you want to find. If this is a maximum, go and make sure you select maximum. Uh, if you're looking for this minimum, make sure you go and find minimum. Select the right function. Everything else after that is going to be really easy, and this can save you a lot of time on your tests uh, and on your exams.